everyone welcome back to my channel and in today's video i am going to discuss about the muscular tissue so this is a third type of animal tissue and as the name indicates this tissue is made up of muscles so these muscles are useful for the locomotion and the, so these muscles are useful for the movement and the locomotion so if we take a movement so movement means moving a particular part of is called a movement whereas the locomotion means moving from one place to another place so for the movement of our organs body parts and uh, for our locomotion muscular tissue plays an important role and the study of muscular tissue is called as a myology so myology is a branch of science which deals with the study of uh, muscular tissues and these muscular tissues have the property of uh, contraction and the uh, relaxation so if these muscular tissues uh, respond to uh, any stimuli then they contract so contraction means becoming uh, shorter and after some time they again goes to its original state which is means uh, relaxation and if we take uh, the structure of the muscular tissue so tissue itself defines it is a group of cells so what are the cells that are present in the muscular tissue means the cells of muscular tissue are called as a uh, muscle fibers so the cells of a muscular tissue are called as a muscle fibers and these muscle fibers are surrounded by a these muscle fibers are surrounded by a plasma membrane which is known as a sarcolemma and the site and the cytoplasm of a muscle fibers is called as a sarcoplasm so this is the plasma membrane and the cytoplasm of a muscle fibers and uh, these also contain some cells uh, known as uh, sarcosomes so if we take a uh, structure of single muscle fiber so this is a uh, muscle fiber so which is nothing but the cells of a muscular tissue so the muscular tissue contains this muscle fibers in more number so if we study a single uh, cell or a single mus muscle fiber it is surrounded by a layer so this layer is called as sarcolemma and the internal space or cytoplasm is known as sarcoplasm and if we take the sarcoplasm it contains some cells which are called as myofibrils so the sarcoplasm of the muscle tissue contains some cells called myofibrils so these myofibrils are made up of two components so the one component is called actin and the second component is called myosin so these con actin and myosin forms uh, alternate light and dark bands inside the cytoplasm so if we take a uh, one myofibril so this uh, these actin and myosin uh, fibrils uh, components give give alternate uh, light and dark uh, appearance for the myofibrils so this is about the muscular tissue and the cells of muscular tissue which is called as a muscle fiber so in addition to actin and myosin these are also these also contain no endoplasmic reticulum sarcoplasmic reticulum and the cells called sarcosomes so these are the components of muscular tissue and if we take uh, the classification of muscular tissue so the muscular tissue is classified into three types of uh, tissues they are skeletal muscle smooth muscle and cardiac muscle so these are the three types of muscles uh, uh, that are classified under the muscular tissue and now we can uh, discuss about the each muscle in detail so let us first discuss about the skeletal muscle so if we take the skeletal muscle the skeletal muscle is called as a striped and the voluntary muscle so striped and the voluntary muscle so so striped means if we uh, if we observe this skeletal muscle under the microscope it contains uh, alternate uh, light bands and the dark bands so dark band and the light band dark band and the light band so in under the microscope it 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 shows a alternate dark and light bands which gives the appearance of stripes 
hence it is called as a striped muscle and a voluntary muscle means it works under the consciousness of an organism or the control of the organism so if we take uh, the muscles of the biceps uh, if we uh, if we want to move the hand uh, we can move by ourselves so that is called as a voluntary muscle so if we take the skeletal muscle and the structure of skeletal muscle as i said before the cells of a uh, um, the cells uh, if we take uh, the cells of muscular tissue are called as a muscle fibers so in the same way the skeletal muscle also made up of a cells called a muscle fiber so this is a uh, muscle fiber and this uh, this one is called muscle fiber and uh, this muscle fiber is surrounded by a layer called a uh, endomycium so this uh, uh, is surrounded by a, a layer called endomycium and the skeletal muscle contains uh, this type of muscle fibers in more number so this is an one muscle fiber and this is one muscle fiber and this is one muscle fiber so this skeletal muscle contains more number of this muscle fiber so each muscle fiber is surrounded by a layer called endomycium and these are all muscle fibers so together constitute and form fascicle so this is an a muscle fiber this is an endomycium and these together constitute a fascicle and this entire fascicle is surrounded by a layer called a perimysium and above the perimysium we can see a layer called epimysium so this is about the structure of a skeletal muscle and if we observe a skeletal muscle so this skeletal muscle is made up of these cylindrical shaped muscle fibers and these muscle fibers contain a more number of nuclei hence the muscle skeletal muscle is uh, cylindrical the muscle fibers are cylindrical in shape and it is in multinucleated condition and it uh, and it also unbranched so it do not forms branches uh, and it is called as unbranched and it is also called as a striped muscle because here the myofibrils which are present in the sarcoplasm shows alternate light and the dark bands hence it is called as a striped muscle and it also it, it works under the control of an organism so hence it is also known as voluntary muscle so example of a location of skeletal muscle is a biceps of arms so here we can find the skeletal muscle so this is about the skeletal muscle and next we can learn about the smooth muscle and the next muscle is a smooth muscle so if we take uh, the smooth if we observe the smooth muscle under the microscope uh, it do not show any alternate uh, light and uh, dark uh, bands and it appears uh, smooth under the microscope so hence it is known as a smooth muscle and the smooth muscle is also called as a unstriped and the involuntary muscle so unstriped muscle means it do not contains a stripe so because the the actin and myosin fragments are not arranged regularly and are arranged unevenly so hence it is called as unstriped because it do not shows any stripes and it also also called as involuntary muscle so we cannot influence the contractions and the relaxations of smooth muscle so hence it is called as a involuntary muscle and it works under the control of autonomous nervous system so autonomous nervous system controls the contraction and the relaxations of smooth muscle so if we, if we learn about the location of smooth muscle we can find that the smooth muscle on on the linings or in connection with the visceral organs so visceral organs means if we take a stomach intestine excretory organs and genital organs so in all these uh, locations uh, we can find the smooth muscle so this muscle uh, is responsible for the uh, contractions of the visceral organs so if we take the movement of a stomach so in the stomach large intestine and the small intestines uh, 
move in a regular fashion uh, and are responsible for the movement of uh, food so this smooth muscle is useful for the uh, movement of the visceral organs and hence it is called as unstriped and involuntary muscle and if we take the structure of smooth muscle uh, it do not uh, uh, exhibit a cylindrical form but it uh, appears in the form of a spindle and it is in a uninucleated condition means it contains only one nuclei and it is an unstriped muscle and if we take uh, uh, the smooth muscle uh, so it is an involuntary and an unstriped muscle and it is also a uh, spindle in shape contains single nucleus and it is not branched hence it is called as a unbranched and if we take uh, the smooth muscle uh, it can remain for longer periods uh, in a contraction without causing fatigue it can remain for longer periods under the contraction without causing a fatigue so fatigue means a uh, uh, stress due to particular action and contraction means becoming or a shortening in size so if uh, if we uh, if we uh, learn about us uh, we already learned about skeletal muscle where uh, the muscles of biceps so if it, if we contract the muscles of um, biceps uh, for some time we can feel a fatigue but smooth muscles can remain for longer periods under contraction without causing fatigue so this is about the smooth muscle and this is the location of the smooth muscle and here the last and the final muscle which is known as a cardiac muscle so as the name indicates this muscle is found in the pericardium of the heart of vertebrate so cardiac means heart so this cardiac muscle is found in the pericardium of the part of the vertebrates so if we take the cardiac muscle the cardiac muscle is called as a striped and a involuntary muscle so striped means uh, it it shows a uh, alternate uh, light and dark stripes uh, like that of skeletal muscle and involuntary muscle means it do not uh, works under the control of an organism it works uh, the working of heart is ca is controlled by a special uh, organ known as a pacemaker so this pacemaker controls the contractions and relaxations of the heart so if we take the cardiac muscle uh, the cells of cardiac muscles are is itself called muscle fibers and the muscle fibers are short cylindrical and they contain so mononucleate or binucleate and they also branched so if we take the cardiac structure of cardiac muscle it is made up of first short cylindrical cells uh, the short cylindrical cells uh, and they are uh, together branched so this is an cardiac muscle and it also shows a uh, stripes uh, same as that of a skeletal muscle and these are uh, connections between the muscle fibers uh, are called as a uh, gap junctions so when we are discussing about the epithelial tissue there we find we discussed about the gap junctions so these gap junctions are similar to the plasmodesmata of the plant cells so these gap junctions are useful for the sending information or stimuli from one cell to another cell so if uh, cardiac muscle needs to contract so these cells send signals from one cell to another cell and ultimately the entire tissue gets contracted so this is the function of the gap junction and the cardiac muscles the function of the cardiac muscles is under the control of pacemaker however the rate of contraction and relaxation is directly depends upon the hormones such as epinephrine and endonephrine so epinephrine endonephrine and pacemaker these are control the contractions and relaxations of the cardiac muscle and is found in the heart of vertebrates and if we say the cells of cardiac muscle they are short cylindrical mono or binucleated and branched and it is also called as a striped and involuntary muscle so this is a, an overall topic about the cardiac muscle and if we take the cardiac muscle it rarely undergoes a contraction so it do not contract always uh, it only contracts during the rare conditions so this is about the overall topic of the muscular tissue 
and if you have any doubts on this topic do comment in the comment box and if you need explanation on any topics please mention in the comment box and do